There's been a lot of double talk about Final Fantasy 16, and as much as I loved this game, I found myself extremely frustrated with large portions of this playthrough. Large content creators have had a lot to say about the game along the same vein, and we're going to cover that too. Some of them absolutely dunking on the game in areas that it probably didn't deserve it, while others are defending the game in the areas that it's the weakest. I'll also preface this by saying if you clicked on this expecting a flowery review of Final Fantasy XVI, you're watching the wrong video. This is actually one of my favorite games of all time, but what does that say about my taste when that accolade places it alongside games like Chrono Cross and Skyward Sword? I love this game, but I'm gonna rip it to fucking shreds when it deserves it. 16 was jumping. Unbiased and fair amazing. review of this game, highlighting the good, the solace, and the bad, the dread. And we're gonna come correct about this shit, but before we get into it, I'm Solace, this is Solace and Dread. We produce analytical content as well as reaction videos primarily focused on Square Enix, Nintendo, and Capcom publications. Follow us on Twitter, or X, to keep up with everything that we're doing, or you can watch us play these games live over on Twitch. Let's start with Solace, the good. Probably gonna finish Final Fantasy 16 this week. I, I thought the game was good. I mean, again, I don't think that the game is a perfect 10. I've, I've enjoyed the game. I think the game's good. Like, I would rate the game a 9.5. Now, honestly, I mostly agree with everything that Asmongold is saying. I do feel the game is a really, really strong entry. I might not have given the score quite as high as he did, but I think he's pretty much on track. The combat is really satisfying, and it's one of the game's biggest, if not few, hooks. They took a harsh departure from Final Fantasy's normal formula, but I think it works, as we have clearly discussed. So many of you hated me for that video. The combat starts off really strong and challenging, but by the time you get a grip on it, you start to melt everything really quickly. We're going to talk about that more later. I do wish that there was more than one character to control, but the amount of abilities that you have that allow you to vary your playstyle definitely make up for that. Overall, I think they did the combat just right. Now let's talk about the visuals, because it's a beautiful game. Visually, it's the tits, and who doesn't like those? The world is gorgeous. Some of the time, you just want to stop and stare out at the landscapes, or look closely at some of the details too. And the combat looks spectacular in both the icon battles and the regular fights, and the character designs are mostly good. Personally, I think that Clive is the coolest Final Fantasy protagonist we have ever seen. No He right on that. Like, I don't know um, who was watching the stream, but... Uh, when I was playing through, like the, what is it, the Clive's uh, mementos in his bedroom. Like, just the detail on all that shit is crazy. On top of that, like, Clive's story, like, it was one of my best stories. But the graphics in the game is amazing. Like, up to, like, during mid-game mid, mid -game play, I would just stop and take pictures of just different, like, scenes and sceneries and, like, locations and stuff in the game. Like, it's really amazing what they did with uh, Final Fantasy. Like, top like i think it's like top five final fantasy one of my favorites my top three is 13 8 and um 14 can't really count 14 because it's your character it's you as a main character but you would take out 14 16 easily fits in there i don't know i just seen a lot of hate so that's why i wanted to see like what p other people's problems was because i didn't I honestly didn't have any problems, especially if you play 14, like Final Fantasy 14, the MMO. It's literally that, but the single player. Well, it's just really not a, it. it's just not enough of like, it's not enough things to do when you beat it. But sometimes that's like a good thing, like with games, like take Assassin's Creed for instance. They have like a shit ton of things to do in the game that are pointless to where you don't even do them all. When Final Fantasy 16, like, I was hitting every fucking side quest when they popped up, like, when in the downtimes of the game, it really, like, delved deep in the story. But let's see if he even touches on any of that stuff. This game on the beauty. But the main story quest is the game's shining star, most of the time. Whether you're infiltrating a castle or racing towards a mountain god to punch him in the mouth, it's usually pretty good. There's a lot of lore that sometimes gets confusing, and 
honestly most of it isn't needed in order to follow the story, but they do have a character dedicated to giving lessons on the lore. Not to mention the active time lore if you want to keep track as you're going through. I said it before, but I'll say it again. This needs to be the fucking standard with all video games. I, I, I never want to not be able to look up the lore as I'm playing through. The emotional depth of this group is satisfying. There's so much to learn about this group, though sometimes you learn a little bit more than you need to. But because of that, by the end of the game, you really feel like you know this group. For a game that only has one truly playable character, you have a bigger party and family than nearly any other Final Fantasy game. Also, on that note, I need to talk about the dragon in the room, Dion. I just gotta say how awesome it is to have an openly gay male character, and it's not a point of focus or a fucking thing. He's just... Oh, so they was gay? Bro, I, call, I knew it, bro. I knew they was... Oh, yeah, I forgot about the kissing scene. Bro, I forgot all about it. That's why at the end they was crying. Bro, I was like, bro. So, you gotta excuse me. I took a break in between Final Fantasy because of fucking Destiny. And so I had, like, forgot about... Like, I had just got to, like, the Dion stuff. So I didn't remember everything about Dion. But I remember when I seen them crying and stuff, I was like, damn, bro, that's his homie over there. I knew he was important to Dion. I forgot that he was gay. But that's another thing about this game. Like, they have characters. And, uh, like, my favorite, there's a bunch of strong woman characters that aren't, like, I'm a strong, independent woman and I don't need no man. And they, they like, just shit on different, just shit on men all throughout the game. No. They wrote the female characters just as a badass female, like Jill, fucking um, Nan, fucking uh, Vivian. It's like a long, Martha, like it's a long list of female characters that were badass. Even the evil ones were written amazing. Like fucking Clive's mother is a dick throughout. The, she's the worst mother you could have. And they written her so well that I hate, like I hated her by the end of the Man, I hate her. But that's what I'm saying. Like, they wrote these characters so well. And they're so diverse and so strong to where it's just like, bro, like, it didn't matter if they was a female, a gay character or not. They just with it, bro. Like, they are, like, they just dope characters. And Step Bro, Dion, is one of my favorite characters in the fucking game. Like, Dion, realest nigga on the team. Dion and Unk. Bro, you can't, and Gab, you can't get no realer than that, bro. You can't get no realer than three besides Joshua and his brother, of course. But, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a fact. It's gay, and that's that. Even better that they refuse to edit that out for the bigoted government of Saudi Arabia. Fucking kudos. As far as I'm concerned, Dion is the most powerful gay character of all time. And now, in my heart, Bahamut is canonically gay. You won't ever convince me otherwise. Now let's shift slightly to the music. The music kind of mirrors the game in that at its heights, it's some of the best music in the entire series, but at its lows, it's all but forgettable. Not too much to say here as it's all about personal taste, but I never found myself annoyed by the music at any point. The only real issue I had was small issues with talking over the dialogue, but that's adjustable. And on that note, the dialogue and voice acting are top notch. I know a lot of people are a huge fan of Ben Starr's entire performance, and I do like the way he portrayed Clive. I think my biggest issue with it, though, is sometimes it just, it felt a little bit Batman-y, where he was just gruff all the time. Sometimes it got a little grating, because he talks a lot. But that's just... I mean, in, in Clive's defense, the nigga was a slave, bro, and the weight of the world was on him. You ain't got, and you're an outlaw, so you kind of, you ain't got no choice but to be Batman at that point. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I get what he's saying, but I didn't, I didn't mind it. I actually fucked with it. Like, I know, just gay, he was just a man, like, just a man. Like, what, your, I, your ideal man of, like, the medieval age, like, just a warrior, but he loved his bitch. That's Clyde. And it was dope. And, I don't know, I probably, I have a Final Fantasy bias, but... It is what it is. Just personal taste, that's not necessarily a bad thing. And Sid was one of the best voiced characters of all time. I, I honestly cannot think of a character that I enjoyed their voice acting for more than Sid. Finally, what kills a lot of games for me was the ending. And this game's ending is fantastic. They subverted my expectations, they didn't play it too safe, 
There are parts that are a little ambiguous, but we'll leave that for another video. Suffice it to say that the story is complete and it doesn't need patching or DLC, which most of you agreed with on our polls on both YouTube and Twitter, which by the way, please follow us on fucking Twitter. Or X, I keep saying Twitter. I would love to leave this game as complete and not get any DLC, but hey, I'm not going to be mad if we get it. I just don't necessarily want it. Now, I mentioned the combat before, but I really want to go back and touch on that a little bit because the combat of the game is definitely what is the most engaging, right? Some of these fights were some of the best fights I've ever experienced in any video game, ever. Thinking about the battle with Bahamut and Titan, even the final boss, they were all phenomenal. This is why the game is so highly rated in my book. Those heights are high, but then you would be matched in MSQ by doing some of the most inane, boring fetch quests right after some of the highest heights I've ever seen. And this is where we start to get into the dread. People are Okay, so in Final Fantasy XIV, how the story is written, when you're doing the main story quest, there are down periods where think of it as arcs in in anime in the arc you have the build up the dialogue all the quests the story stuff given to you you introduce the villain introduce who you're going to be fighting get to know them see their backstory while that's brewing and going on in the background you have your stuff you're doing the lay of the land excuse me your everyday life things that are going on so in my head it was fine also because i'm used to that in final fantasy 14 i feel like a lot of people who that's why that's probably what it is a lot of people who are in other games when there's down periods there's other exciting things to do and a lot of games recently feel uh, they're like roller coasters like once it gets exciting it has to be exciting throughout the entire uh, length of the game I don't necessarily feel like that but um I just noticed something wrong here so anyway um but because of that those down times that's when the story can be fleshed out so in my head like when I'm doing all those side quests and all those little fetch quests you're learning the lore you know but I like that stuff like that's the stuff I like like I like reading all that stuff. I like listening to the dialogue. I like listening to this shit. I like caring about who I'm like, what's next, what like what's next on the list of me having to fight and what area of the country I'm about to save and why I need to save it. To me, that's dope. And so I get that. And if you play Final Fantasy XIV in the MMO, that's what they do. Like that's what it is in the MMO. And so like if you go to each new area in the MMO. You learn about the who's in charge, who's over everything, what's going on, meet the people, meet the city, learn how to interact with each other, and go from there. And on, with that being said, because you get to meet everybody and care about those characters and care about those people, then, you know, the pro you get to solve everybody's little minute problems and then go, take, go out for the head honcho. And when you go out for the head honcho, it just feels like like saving that area in that country is worth even more than you know a typical game and so that's how 14 is set up and yes you fight like little enemies here and there but to me that's worth it because it's like and then what's dope is that like once you go around like you get to go around like and say your goodbyes to the world and make sure like everybody's all right in the end because once you go fight this last dude you're not coming back basically oh sorry i mean spoilers whatever but uh but i like that shit i like you know traveling the world and meeting meeting everybody in the world and stuff so you know but i but i get i mean maybe tiktok brain a lot of people have tiktok brain now and a lot of people need stuff to be super super action-packed nowadays i don't know like the downtown to me or it's important, especially when you watch a dope ass anime. Just think of like Hunter Hunter or My Hero. Like my hero arcs always start low at a low point, chilling, see what's going on in the school, and it just gets grandiose, you know what I'm saying? It gets bigger and bigger. 
And then by the end of the arc, you're like hyped as fuck, adrenaline rush, and you ba- fight the bad guy. Same with Hunter Hunter, you know what I'm saying? So, and you hog a show hell. Aren't going to like it when I eventually make a moist meter on it, but it's the fucking truth, and it's time to face it now. The game's level design is non-existent. Every single fucking level in that game is horrible. It is literally hold forward. You maybe get two mobs to fight, and then another cutscene, and it's just rinse and repeat every single time. There is no exploration. The open world is so fucking dead and empty and boring. All the side quests I've done so far are trash. It is literally just, here's one mob, now hold forward again, here's another mob. Okay, now here's the cutscene. Now hold forward, here's another mob. Like, there's just nothing to explore or really do in any of the levels. But the game, overall, I still think is really fun. And I also don't like the complete absence of RPG elements, really. But Final Fantasy VII Remake is the same exact thing, but I digress. People just buy it because they like Final Like, the same thing is in Final Fantasy VII. And the same thing is in sixteen. You can sit here and tell me all day long that it's not in seven, but it is. I gotta say, he's a little harsh, but what he's saying is mostly right. I truly don't enjoy agreeing with Charlie's negative takes on games, but I think this time he was fair. There are elements of this game that would put it in the masterclass or masterpiece category where it's unforgettable, a must play, the game of generations, and then there's so many things that it's fucking lacking that keep it from ever making it into that echelon. The level design is bad. Not a single puzzle in the game, and there's very little reason to explore. I've never seen peaks and valleys like this. The pacing is wild, and it doesn't help that the gameplay doesn't vary at all, ever. And side quests, they're boring. A lot of side quests in Final Fantasy are filled with mini games that change how you interact with the game, or they're extremely rewarding. Think about it. When you think about Final Fantasy, one of the first things that you think of is Blitzball or Tetra Master or the shotgun blast of mini games in the Gold Saucer. Or f- but all of those are games of the past. Like, bro, people be holding fun. No, you don't think of Final Fantasy like that. That's Final Fantasy of the old, bro. Like, it's weird, bro. Like, everybody holds Final Fantasy to what you had in the fucking past. Like, when you think of Final Fantasy today, it's not been like that for 10 years. 13 doesn't have shit like that. Well, I think 13 has, the 13 have any mini games? No, I think there may be mini games in 13 too because people complain about it, but I can't remember. I got to go back replay that one. There's not any in fucking, um, there's not any in uh, Final Fantasy 15. I know damn sure for sure uh, that unless they added some in the, um, the king what is, what was the king collection thing at the end the the with all the dlc stuff but even still i played through all of the dlc except for arts and they didn't add nothing but extra suits and power and just shit um there's mini games in 14 but that's the mmo it's gonna have that um none in fucking type zero none in fucking crisis core like game since 2010 bro Final Fantasy has not had that shit. So, like, I don't know why people keep holding Final Fantasy up to the standard of yesteryears, bro. They got to get over that. And then Final Fantasy is the is the is Square Enix's baby that they do and try new things with. Like, they do new things every new every Final Fantasy is something new or something different, and that's just what it is, and that's what it's been for years years at this point fishing that kind of stuff but in this game your gameplay never damn it was fishing in 15 damn it was fishing in 15 damn i thought i was thinking that was a vr game though wasn't it oh no it wasn't the base game anyway that was one side quest that was one thing. Ever changes. The criticism. Oh no, you can cook in fifteen too. Damn, maybe I'm wrong. What else was in fifteen? I don't know. I gotta re- go back and replay it now. The MMO like side quests is valid. You're always doing one of three things: talking to an NPC, killing a mob, or picking up an item. That's literally it. This is by far the biggest issue with Final Fantasy sixteen. 
and what gets under my skin is as soon as you mention this, the Final Fantasy Defense Force crops up and they immediately cherry pick five or six of the best side quests that happen at the very end of the game or in the beginning of the game. They hold them up and they're like, look at this. Look, 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 look. This is good. This is good. But it's in a sea of a hundred other bland ones that plague the game with stilted dialogue and are building out a world that is an intentionally bleak and dreary landscape with almost no joy or fun. Yes, there are side quests that are heartwarming and actually rewarding, especially at the end of the game. But highlighting those few and saying, look how good all the side quests are when it's in a sea of crap is fraudulent. This is why old school Final Fantasy fans are validated when they give criticism of the game. It lacks one of the most identifiable parts of the franchise. And they intentionally did this as to not break immersion, which is the most ridiculous decision ever. But I won't harp on it. Nah, I still disagree, bro. I still disagree. Even if they put those side quests in there, only like select few people did it. And then a lot of people who do do it, half of them complain about it. And the other half just don't care to even do it. So it's just like, I don't know, bro. Like me, it's something, like I can't remember the last like mini game and shit. I play a lot on my 14, but I, it's really not that important. Like you go back and do mini games when you want to replay the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, you do that shit then, but I don't know, bro. Like, that's not a valid reason. That's not a valid reason. Because if you look at, like, they only, and then, okay, another defense. They only harper on the mini games of the PlayStation era, like, 7, 8, 9, and 10. 11 was an MMO. 12 did 12 have mini games i cannot remember i want I don't, i'm pretty sure 13 didn't have i want to say 13 2 had them i want to say 13 2 had the mini games but even still the final fantasies of the gba era one through six didn't have them so it's like in, in a sense it's sticking to the roots you know not the gba era the s and you know what i fucking mean i played them on a gba but um, Final Fantasy 1 through 6 didn't have mini games. They may have had, like, I want to say, the Chocobo things. And only a couple of those had those, maybe 5, 6. No, 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 that was 4. 4 had, four had like, 2 mini games or something like that. Maybe, I cannot remember. Goddamn old as fuck, bro. But anyway. The older, older Final Fantasy games didn't have this shit, so it's just like... Mm. It's just dry. To say it succinctly, the side quests are good, but not fun. They're good in the sense that watching a filler episode in One Piece is good. Another smaller issue is the party not having any dialogue when they're following you 98% of the time during side quests. Every great once in a while, they'll chime in and say something, but more often than not, they just follow you like quiet, blank DPS zombies. I, I don't like this. No, Joshua talk a lot. Joshua always chimed in with every side quest. Once you um, once you get Josh in the party, he always talking. So either he had just tuned out by then, or well, or what just wasn't paying attention. Like Joshua, now I I can argue Jill. Jill didn't really talk much. Sid talked a hell of a whole lot. Joshua stayed chiming in, and yeah, especially the times Gav was in the party, he talked. But Gav was more of a story player that was with you. But, yeah, no. No, my boy. Um, I'm not trying to, like, just deconstruct his video, you know. Because, he's, you know, he got way more than me going on. But Final Fantasy 16, I don't believe, deserves all the hate that it gets. It's really sad. Because it's a traditional Final Fantasy game, like... If you want to think of, like, this is really like a Final Fantasy game from, like, Final Fantasy 1 era, like, rooted back from back then. Like, and Yoshi P even stated he wanted to make, he wanted to take Final Fantasy back to, like, those times, like, 1 through, I guess 1 through 6. Like, you know, this is a cross between 1 and 5. 5 was the Dark Knight, one. it? Yeah, 5 was the Dark Knight. So if you think about what he said about that then 
Yeah, like Final Fantasy. He made the Final Fantasy sixteen. He wanted. You know what I'm saying? It's, it doesn't need to be like for spoken levels where they're talking constantly with cringy dialogue, but for spoken did something to properly address this and gave you a banter slider. Give us the option. That was actually a brilliant idea. Did I just praise for spoken for something in a review of Final Fantasy 16? Yes. How about another? All 11 women in Forspoken pass the Bechdel test, but you know what game doesn't pass the Bechdel test? Final Fantasy 16. Okay, okay, okay. There is like one exchange where it almost kind of passes the test, and that is with Jill and Taria. But come on, man. The representation here is not the greatest. Par for the course on Final Fantasy. They've been guilty of this for years, and admittedly, this is far from the worst that it's ever been. At least Jill has an arc that sees her reclaim some of her power and her self-respect. And she does it in an explosive way. And it's really good. But that arc pretty much wraps by the end of the second Crystal Dungeon. While it is really good, beyond that, Jill is then put into the same tropes that other Final Fantasy women have fallen victim to. You gotta rescue her. Three times. Then in the end, she gives up her power to Clive in the most submissive manner possible. Coupled with a kind of awkward love scene. She's great representation until she's not. A full video is coming, focusing just on Jill. And I'm also gonna call somebody out for spilling bullshit out of their face. Now let's talk real quick about Final Fantasy mode. It's where the challenge of the game lies. No, I definitely don't agree with that. Jill, every time Jill got saved, it's because she defended Clive, especially the end. I can, I can count the beginning, but she was a slave and they was controlling her and she that that's what made clive like snap out of that fucking i'm not gonna be a slave nigga i'm i'm him you know what i'm saying like i'm him what a, what the fuck i'm doing as a slave he snapped out of it he saved jill go down that's the beginning of the game the second time you save her she got captured i want to say she was in a, she used her powers like she okay so she's kind of she was weak and her come to find out she was partly using her summons like the fit so it's a 15 year gap the 15 year where the main character clive isn't doing anything isn't using his powers and shit she is so she is weak like you find out that all the icons and all the uh, the bearers of the icons they are getting weaker and you know they're dying from it and she's weak and so she get caught slipping so that's the one time he could argue but she got caught slipping the other time was saving clive like the nigga like bro like you can't even use that against her that's not fair she was saving him she was saving her boo she a real nigga at that at that point but it's nearly pointless nearly it's not that much harder more of the same with spongy enemies if the combat doesn't hook you in your first playthrough, then Final Fantasy mode ain't it. I just don't see a point. I genuinely feel that a harder difficulty mode should have been offered from the very beginning of the game. Harder than action mode. My favorite RPG franchise, which is Star Ocean, had replay value because of the increased difficulty, and when you're playing through the story, there are different choices and different characters to play that affect your gameplay and affect your story. That is replay value. This is not that. Honestly, this difficulty or Final Fantasy mode could have been relegated to the Arete Stone and made it actually useful and used as an unlock for the final weapon. It doesn't contribute to trophies. There isn't really much point for the Arete Stone as it is. I don't know. This Maybe this is just my opinion here, but I don't think it's worth going through the game just for that. I, I just don't. Not a second time. Also, action mode probably should have had enemies scale and level with you. Doing the side quest left you overpowered and thus destroying everything you came across in the main story. The only time I even died was some random hunt where I wasn't paying attention and got kebobbed. Even the hardest hunt was kind of a joke. Final Fantasy is known for some tough super bosses. I don't know where they went. Linking all this together, despite my heavy criticism of the game, it is really fucking good. I'm just passionate about it because if they had just kept a few more of the conventions of the franchise, then this could have been a masterpiece as opposed to just game of the year material. Speaking of, now people aren't even sure if it's gonna win. And considering how I felt about Tears of the Kingdom, that's really upsetting. Honestly, this should have cleared easily. As I've said repeatedly on social media, which by the way, follow me on Twitter. But <laughs> 
X. The highs are the highest heights Final Fantasy has ever reached. The lows are alongside the depths of Final Fantasy VIII levels of dryness. It's exceptionally painful when it was an intentional choice that hurt what could have been a top five game of all time. Anyway, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. And long live the Turtle Kingdom. Well, hello everyone, or no one, Overnight Siren here, to dump all my thoughts into an- I mean, the video, it is what it is, uh, damn, he made a whole video essay, um, yeah, a lot of that I don't agree with, a lot of people bash on Final Fantasy, but I feel like Final Fantasy just became a trope. To bash There's on now and today sounds like nobody's ever gonna be happy with it until years later and that's just what it is. Like nowadays people um they they hate it now and then love it later. Like guarantee you, like thirteen is getting a resurgence now because people are going back and playing it. And now they wish Final Fantasy would go back to what 13 did. 13 did a lot of dope things at the time 13 came out. I love 13. I still love 13. 13 is my favorite number. I think I was biased by 13 regardless. But it is one of my favorite Final Fantasy, especially now that I can play it on the Steam Deck. It's truly like... It, it was truly a gift of its time. It was in a part of transitioning to the new technology of what we have today but still holding on to the ways of the old with the ps2 ps1 era of final fantasy and it's a weird cross between both but at the time people didn't like that people don't like change people don't like you know different shit or whatever but final fantasy 13 is a testament of people hating something tremendously when it comes out and loving it years later and there and people are doing that with a lot of things nowadays so with that being said i feel like that years down the road when people come back and replay 15 because it's not too much and it's not too little it's just right to me like it's a game to where it doesn't overstay as welcome and it doesn't need too much to tell a diverse story. Even 13 has its flaws. And they, have, and they, they did it intentionally to tell the story over in three games. 15 was going to be three games. You get what I'm saying? We're, we're supposed to be in Final Fantasy 15 3, if not already had, like, like just now getting it. You know what I'm saying? Like, just now had it, like, a couple years ago. Like, Final Fantasy 15 was supposed to be told in three three arcs like that's how it was that's how it was written to be and the fact that he took a game wrote it and made his piece with it and everything's there from start to finish no extra i don't even think it has a patch man has an update or whatever but you can get to this play from start to finish and be in love and A lot of Final Fantasy don't have don't have that, you know. Especially nowadays, they don't have that. I mean, look what they're doing with Final Fantasy VII. Especially if Tetsu Nomura is over, he wants to fucking stretch out everything into a three game trilogy, three game this, three game that, three game everything with him or more. Look at Kingdom Hearts. You know what I'm saying? He couldn't even finish Kingdom Hearts. He fucking ruined Kingdom Hearts. But Yoshi P just wanted to take. He had the opportunity and he did it on top of running an MMO. So, with that being said, he did his due justice. And I guarantee you, y'all come back to this video. Years later, when people start hyping up Final Fantasy 16 about it's amazing, this, this, is that, I love it, the greatest game, we shouldn't have been so hard on it, blah, blah, blah. Watch what, watch. I'm, I'm a, I can't wait to be like I told you so. Because they did it at 13. Third people are going back to right now playing Final Fantasy 13 and this trilogy and they're in love with it and they can't they can't spot no wrong with it. I'm fixing to 
I'll be right back. We're gonna watch some more videos. But I'm uh I gotta run downstairs. <laughs>